hi to the person that is watching this video and once again i am coming with my voice uh, recording the videos as usual and i am now on question 10 of the uh, question by the name Pensino pty ltd and this was a 50 max question meaning it's one of the long questions and for this question i will specifically be focusing on one requirement and that requirement has to do uh, with the discontinuation of one product and continuing with other products so we have to advise the management on either to continue or discontinue with the production of another product so the requirement as usual that i start with the requirements says ignore the possibility of the internal transfer of instant coffee so now meaning for another division there's a possibility or there's a proposal to transfer uh, the sale of a specific product to another department or division but they say we must be ignorant of the transfer price uh, of instant coffee but advise uh, the cappuccino division based on the budgeted information if the if cap product should be discontinued or not so there is a product by the name f a f c a p that should or that the management has an opportunity to discontinue so after the financial analysis and the financial implication we should then be able to advise the management or the board of uh, the company on either to discontinue with this opportunity or with the proposal or with the idea to discontinue with the fcap product so this is the only question that i will be doing which is seem to be a very small question out of 15 marks but the calculation and analysis of this question is a bit broad bigger than uh, the marks that we see so hence i will only do this requirement and perhaps uh, the other requirements which is uh, b c d and e i might do them later separately in this same question so my main focus for this uh, video is only on the first requirement where we have to know on how to make a financial decision on the discontinuancy or continuancy of a, a specific product then it says Bensino PTY Ltd manufactures uh, coffee products so this company manufactures coffee products and the company has two divisions namely uh, managed by independent management team and these divisions are called coffee division which manufactures instant coffee remember there was the possibility of the transfer of the instant coffee but they said ignore that implication that is sold to the grocery retailers and the cappuccino division which manufactures instant cappuccino so this is another division it manufactures instant cappuccino that is sold to vending machine providers and both the instant uh, coffee and the instant cappuccino are sold in powder form so this is a uh, powder form is not sold in liters then it further says that the cappuccino division currently acquires the instant uh, coffee from an external supplier so they are buying this from an external supplier at the cost price of 40 rand per kg and the company is investigating the possibility of transferring the instant coffee needed by the cappuccino division from the coffee from the coffee division so now this is the possibility of the internal transfer of the instant coffee needed by the cappuccino division from the coffee division however we are being ignorant of this transfer in the first question because the first question said 
ignore the implication or the effect of the internal transfer price. The Cappuccino division will save 3 rand per kg procurement cost if the instant coffee is transferred internally. So now they say if this coffee is not bought externally but transferred internally, there will be some procurement savings of 3 rand which is good for uh, the company at lunch and that is also leading to what we call goal congruency where now the organization is serving the same goal of maximizing the profit for the entire organization, not only for the division that each manager is working for. Then now we know that we are being ignorant of this implication. So when I proceed to doing the other questions or other requirements, then I will come back uh, to this part. So far, it's not important to answer what we are required to answer. So now we proceed uh, with that same note. Just want to circle this. And uh, now it says under the Cappuccino division, budgeted information is provided to us below. Division manufactures three types of product, namely regular Cappuccino. So that is our cap flavored Cappuccino, which is F cap and unsweetened Cappuccino, which is uh, U cap. And the company uses 250 grams of instant coffee to manufacture 1 kg of cappuccino, regardless of the type of cappuccino manufactured. Meaning all the types of cappuccinos, the regular cappuccino, the flavored cappuccino, and unsweetened cappuccino, we incur all the ingredients is 250 grams uh, in order to make only one kg of a cappuccino. And that is a very simplified version of the question whenever the kg requirements for each product are the same, then it's honestly very simple even for standard costing papers. Then now we go to the next paragraph that says the division is considering the discontinuance of the flavored cappuccino one of their products was flavored cappuccino so now they want to discontinue the production and the sale of the flavored cappuccino and using this manufacturing capacity to increase the production of regular cappuccino and unsweetened cappuccino so they will still continue these two product which is regular and unsweetened cappuccino and they expect to increase their capacity uh, by manufacturing more of these two products and discontinuing with the production of the flavored cappuccino. Then now we, we, we continue and take note that whenever there's discontinuation there's also non-financial factors that must also be taken into consideration and when we read to other requirements regarding this question therefore now that is taken into consideration to say what other non-financial factors that the company would have taken into consideration before they decide on the discontinuancy of uh, the regular cappuccino you are given the following budgeted data for the coming year so we have regular cappuccino, we have uh, unsweetened cappuccino and flavored cappuccino and the total column with regards to the sales, uh, this is in cages, this is the number of sales that the company has made up to the total of 800,000 sales in units and the units is the grams, the kilogram that the company is producing and selling because this kind Pacino is sold in kilograms in a powder form. Then after we have our sales revenue that is provided to us, meaning there must have been a selling price for each of these because the revenue of 15 million must have been this times it by the selling price. So let me check if how much was the selling price for each of the products. For the regular cappuccino, we can see that the revenue from sales was 15 million 950,000. And if this is 50 million 950,000, 
rands, we divide this by 319,000 and this gives us an amount of 50 rand, meaning the selling price must have been 50 rand. So let me write the selling price here. So meaning we had a selling price of 50 rand for the regular cappuccino. This is the selling price per unit. Then after we have 14,250,000 rands, which is the total revenue from the sale of 285,000 units, which is in cages. And again, the selling price for the unsweetened cappuccino must have been 50 rand. And let us look for the flavored cappuccino. We obtained a revenue of 40 million. 392,000 we divide this by oh, that is the total is 10 million 192,000 rands we divide this by 196,000 rands and this gives us 206 rand so we can see the price for this flavored cappuccino was not very cheap 10 million 192,000 rands divide this by 196,000 196, units sorry that must have been 53 rand 53 rand 53 cents previously i must have uh, calculated incorrectly so this cappuccino was a uh, three rand above other cappuccino being unsweetened and the regular cappuccino so these are the selling price that we have on board then now uh, we have the total of the cost that were in kit probably the cost of sales and the cost was made of material direct labor advertising of the cappuccinos and the depreciation of the machinery and that is our total depreciation for each of the product already allocated and our overheads and remember our overheads can be divided into fixed and variable and maybe also our labor can also be divided to fixed and variable most of these are likely to be fixed and variable costs however we still have to wait for the information that tells us so in terms of how much the portion that is fixed and how do we allocate such so we already provided with the total for all of them for each of the line items and we already have the totals and we can see perhaps the reason why the company wants to discontinue with the flavored cappuccino is the fact that they are making a loss but despite the loss i just want to highlight this before time despite the loss uh, the country this uh, product still contributes to the reduction of the fixed cost because our sales minus our variable cost gives us contribution to fixed cost meaning this uh, flavored cappuccino uh, product still reduces our fixed cost so now we proceed on that same note it says now we have the budgeted it says the budget assumes that the cappuccino division runs 100 percent cap, uh, capacity and all units manufactured will be sold meaning there is no closing inventory all losses in the manufacturing process may be regarded as immaterial so we don't have to worry about the normal loss otherwise there is a loss but the loss is immaterial so it's just a normal loss then under number two it says that the following or the allocation of the labor cost between fixed and variable are or is as follows so meaning our labor is divided into fixed and variable and the fixed portion of labor is provided for each of the three products and the variable part is uh, also provided for each of the products <clears throat> and this total of the labor should be the total that we see under our labor cost and our labor cost for the regular cappuccino we can see that is 810 uh, sorry it is 210 2 million and 73 thousand five hundred so it should be exactly the same here 
which is 2,073,500. And for all of them, it is exactly the same because the combination of the fixed and variable that is recorded in the mean income statement above. And also the total is given. And just to confirm, it's 5,424,500. And if we look at that, we have 5,424,500. So our figures are aligned. And it says the above or the aforementioned fixed labor cost relates to fixed management and supervisor cost and has been apportioned to each product on the basis of the kilograms manufactured. So now meaning this cost of labor that is fixed was allocated to each of the product based on the number of units that uh, were manufactured, which is the kilograms manufactured. And I just want also to prove this to you in terms of how they calculated. Remember, we have our total production being 800,000 kgs or units. So now meaning we can take the fixed cost, which is the fixed cost in terms of labor. It is given to us as 2,400,000 rands, meaning they said 2,400,000 rands divide this by 800,000 kgs. Therefore, now this gave them the rate of 350 per kg or per unit because their unit is a kg. Then after now, this was multiplied by the production for each of the product. And for the regular cappuccino, we manufactured 319. So they said it times this by 319,000 uh, kgs. And this would have given them a triple one six. Let us check if does this appear uh, to us as. So we do have this portion. There we have a triple one six five hundred. So this would have been allocated exactly in that manner. So we could see that part. So meaning if we say 350, we term the 350 uh, by the total of the production, which is 285,000. It should give us the same labor of 997,500 uh, that we see. Okay, let me check where is that. Okay, we don't see that match. Uh, but let me skip it if it does not prove to be if it does not prove it to be the same amount let me skip it in fact i was not meant to test it but i just wanted to check if are the figures aligned perhaps there's something uh, not right that i'm doing so now these are the fixed and the variable portion which was allocated on the basis of kilograms manufactured Remember, what is manufactured gets to be sold, and this was the fixed uh, part. Then after now, we go to the next paragraph, and the next paragraph says to us that, number three, the Cappuccino division has signed a three-year marketing campaign contract with Extreme Marketing. The amount due to extreme marketing for the budgeted period is 3,300,000 rands, and the cost is shared equally between the three products that the company is manufacturing. So now, meaning it has to be 3,300,000 rands, and we divide this by three, it should give us 1,100,000 for each of the uh, divisions. Of for each of the products, then we have 1.1, 1.1, 1.1. At the end of the day, the total of the marketing will be 3.3 million. Then now remember, this is still before the discontinuation. Then after number four, say that the manufacturing machine can be used on any of the product line. Therefore, the depreciation charged is apportioned to the products based on the kilograms manufactured so now meaning the depreciation that we have seen it was allocated based on the kilograms manufactured so let me again test this because it's supposed to give us the same amount meaning depreciation of 240,000 they must have said 240,000 divide this by 800,000 and remember 800,000 is the total of the units that uh, were manufactured 
and this gives us uh, 30 cents. 30 cents times this by uh, 0. 30 cents uh, times this by 319,000. Times by 319,000. And this gives us 957,000. And you can see that we do have 957,000. And again, 0 0.3, which was 240,000 divided by 800,000. 800,000 being the total production units. Times this by 285,000 units. And this gives us 85,000. And also the next one will be 0 0.3 times this by 196,000 units that we manufactured, which gives us 58,800. And we can testify on that. So this will be uh, the total that uh, we see for the depreciation. So this is also what I wanted to do in terms of testing the allocation of the fixed cost of 2.4 million. And I don't know why it does not want because the allocation was still on the basis of kilograms manufactured. And here is also on the budgeted kilograms manufactured. So the base of allocation was the same based on kilograms. I don't know why that one was not uh, giving me the same figure. Because if I say 2,400,000 and I divide this by 800,000, it should be giving me, three, oh, it was not 3.3 times this by 319,000, which is 957,000. Okay, therefore, now it means I must have done a mistake. We do have our 957,000. Therefore, now we say three times by 285,000. This is eight. Oh, therefore, now meaning I must have punched something wrong in the uh, improving the fixed cost. Then, after now, it will be again three times by 196,000 units that were manufactured, which is 558,000 rands. So at least uh, my calculations are accurate. I was a bit bored at testing something so simple, but not getting the right answer. So now we are done with uh, number four, then we can go to number five. So be mindful of these two. The base of allocation regarding the fixed portion of labor and the base of allocation in terms of the marketing, which is equal and the base of allocation, which is the budgeted kilograms manufactured with regard to what we call a non-cash item depreciation or YNT. Then now we go to number five. They say under number five <clears throat> that 10%, which is 10% that you know, 10% of the other overheads for each product is fixed, while the remaining uh, overhead are variable so now if we go under our overheads we have to allocate now our overheads then i have to show calculations separately for the overheads then i have to split my overheads for the three products and the three products is just want to write them in the order r cap u cap f cap it is R cap U cap there might not be enough space uh, let me take the fixed part R cap U cap and F cap. And they said our fixed cost is 10% of the overheads. So I'm looking for the 10%, which is the fixed portion. 10% of the overheads are fixed, while the remainder is variable. So I'm starting with the fixed part. And my overheads are provided to me as two million three ninety two five hundred two which is two million three ninety and ten percent of that is fixed and for the second product which is uh, 
unsweetened cappuccino it was 1 million 1 million 852,500 times this by 10%. <clears throat> then after we go to the next one, which is as 1 million 1 million 1 million And if you times all this by 10%, you get to the fixed portion of our overheads this is overheads this is the fixed portion then after now i have to go to the variable portion this will give us 210 uh, 210 2,239,000 250 176,400 that will be the fixed uh, cost you just turn by 10% or eliminate the last zero then we go to the variable part variable overheads this was fixed overheads our variable overheads will definitely be 90%. This will be R cap, uh, U cap, unflavored cappuccino, and flavored cappuccino. And this will give us 90%, which is 2,392,500. Turn this by 90%. And we have 1,852,500 times it by 90% because 10% is, is fixed, then 90% will be variable. 1,764,000 rands times this by 90%. Now, the minute you do these calculations, you must use them even if you calculated them wrong for the purpose of method mark. Now this will this can be called working one or working for in fact there's only one example or, or question that I will be responding to. So this will be two million three hundred and ninety-two thousand five hundred times this by ninety percent and I get two million hundred and fifty three thousand two hundred and fifty. Next one will be 1,852,500 times this by 90%. This is 1,667,250. Then after we say 1,764,000 times this by 90%. And this gives us 1,500,000. 87,600 rands. So now if we add this where we say the last one plus 174,400 it should give us uh, the total let me check for this is 176,400 plus 1 Five eight seven six hundred. This gives us the total of hundred and one million seven sixty four thousand. When you add the two fixed and variable for each product, you must get the total of the overhead for that product. Meaning, you must get the total of the overhead of one million seven sixty four thousand. When you add the cappuccino, which is the flavored cappuccino. And also for the second product, for the second product, we had just change the color. Then we had one million and uh, one eighty-five two fifty and one million six hundred and sixty-seven two fifty. So one million eight hundred and fifty-two thousand, one a one eighty-five thousand two fifty, plus one million six hundred and sixty-seven thousand two fifty. This gives us. 1,852,500, which is 
exactly 1,852,500 this one. So we can see that our figures are balancing. Then after the last one is 2,153,250. Plus two million three hundred and uh, two hundred and thirty nine thousand two hundred and fifty, and this gives us two million three ninety two thousand five hundred, which is the total of the cost that we've been allocating. It's very important to do that random test to make sure that at least the total of ten percent and ninety percent they give you hundred percent of the amount. So now we have allocated our overheads into fixed and variable then i think this was or this must have been the last overhead which was split into fixed and variable and we also had labor that was split into fixed and variable just be mindful of those two when it comes to the discontinuation we need not to forget all those uh, implications so now i proceed in the same spirit then now i go to number six number six says Seizing, which is discontinuing the manufacturing of the flavored cappuccino, will eliminate 60% of the fixed labor charge relating to the flavored cappuccino. Remember our labor, there was a portion that was fixed and there was a portion that was variable. So now our fixed portion of labor that relates to the flavored, meaning the product that we want to discontinue, they say 60% of this will be eliminated. So our focus, I don't want to use uh, the other method where we focus on the difference, but I want to use the comprehensive approach that is uh, normally recommended by lecturers. However, the short, which I call the short approach, where we only consider the effect of the change in each item in the element of the financial statement, which is income statement specifically, because all these items that will be affected by this discontinuation are the items of the statement of a, a profit or loss and other comprehensive. So now I will be taking the comprehensive approach where I take into account the total revenue and the total cost that have been affected by this discontinuance. So now 60% will be eliminated. So my focus in ho is on how to allocate the 40% that has remained. So now let me go to the uh, number six now, and I say discontinuation. Number six is a uh, specifically discontinuation. Discontinuation, and I'm focusing on fixed labor fixed labor not eliminated which is 40 percent remember 40 percent will remain so now we say 40 percent of labor will not be eliminated under the flavored cappuccino they said to us that 60% of the fixed labor charge relating to the flavored cappuccino will be eliminated, meaning 40% will remain. Then the question is, how do we allocate the 40% of 588,000? So I'm focusing on the 588,000 times it by 40% so that I know the remainder of the cost and how what to do with the remainder of the cost of fixed labor that was allocated to the fixed to the flavored cappuccino. 588,000 rands times this by 40%. Therefore now this gives me uh, 235,200. This is the fixed cost that will remain then the question is how to allocate this fixed cost because previously we were told and it, it it was already allocated for us then let us read further and see what else this sentence has for us and they further say to us and 50 percent of the flavored cappuccino fixed overheads cost remember our overheads we split them into fixed and variable so now i'm focusing on the discontinuance which is the uneliminated cost discontinuation and uh, eliminated 
unaliminated cost, which is the 40%. This was in the case of fixed labor, not eliminated. Therefore, now I have to go to uh, the fixed overheads, not eliminated again. Fixed overheads, let me go to the next page for space papers. Fixed overheads, not eliminated. which is strictly for the flavored cap division or product and again this is uh, for flavored cappuccino this is the product that we are focusing on and here again the flavored cappuccino fixed overhead that are not eliminated we have to know how much are those Remember, now we have to go to the flavored cappuccino fixed overhead. Flavored cappuccino fixed overheads amounted to 176,400. And 50% of that is eliminated and 50% of that is not eliminated. 176,400. 176,400. Term this by 50%. Another 50% is eliminated, another one is not eliminated. 176,400 divided by 2, it gives me a total of 88,200. Therefore now, again, we say uneliminated fixed cost. Uneliminated, eliminated fixed cost uneliminated overheads fixed overheads therefore now we have to do allocation of fixed overheads and we also have to do the allocation of this allocation of fixed labor how do we allocate this amount to the remaining products because it is still there but the product does no longer exist now because the company wants to discontinue then we need to listen to the question now once again the question says to us that uh, the fixed overheads cost not eliminated we are referring to the fixed overheads which fixed overheads are we talking to? We are talking about this fixed overheads which is not eliminated, meaning uneliminated uh, fixed overheads. They say the fixed overheads that are not eliminated, meaning the one that still remains but the product that is no longer in the production of uh, this company. The fixed overheads cost not eliminated will be apportioned equally between the regular cappuccino and unsweetened cappuccino. So now we can allocate that to the R cap and U cap, meaning unsweetened cappuccino. How do we do that? They said equally. 88,200 times this by 50%. You can just say divide by 2. Equally is 50% or divide by 2. 88,200 times this by 50%. So we just divide that by 2, it gives us 44,100. So there is 44,100 fixed cost and there is 44,100 of the fixed cost that was attributed to the flavored cappuccino that the company does no longer produce or wants not to continue with the production of this product. So at the end of the day, the total will obviously give us the same 88,200 rands. So now we have done the allocation of the uneliminated fixed costs that were attributed or were related to the production of the flavored cappuccino that the company now wants to discontinue with. So now we listen to the second part of the same sentence and costing, you must always read it well detailed. So we have read the first part and we stopped here. Then now we proceed from here. It says, and 
and okay then we, we are done also with that and unflavored cappuccino and it says and the labor cost apportioned on the the labor cost allocation will remain as is hey what do they mean now the labor cost allocation will remain as is meaning there was a way the fixed labor cost was allocated previously and they say we must stick to the same method of allocation let's go back to the table where we had our labor the table where we had our labor it was under number two and there was a fixed portion of labor and there was also a variable portion of labor or variable and fixed and they said the above mentioned fixed labor cost relates to fixed management and supervisor cost and has been apportioned to each product on the basis of the kilograms manufactured so now meaning we keep the same allocation meaning now in the case of the fixed uh, labor that was uneliminated the one that we calculated as 235 200 it must be allocated using the number of kilograms that were manufactured by the company that becomes the base of allocation meaning now allocating that amount of fixed cost meaning the labor fixed cost which is uneliminated 40 percent of the fixed that was related to this product must be allocated using the number of units that are manufactured and those number of units are three nineteen thousand and two hundred and eighty five thousand remember now we are no longer allocating to the flavor cappuccino anymore we are allocating the fixed cost in terms of labor that was fixed which was related to this which was the 40 percent that we have calculated we are allocating that fixed cost to uh, the unsweetened and the regular cappuccino on the basis of the kilograms or the units that were manufactured by these divisions so now let us uh, wait and not allocate at this point in time because there might be a change in the production because of this proposal to discontinue hence this uh, 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 number six i suppose it was uh, supposed to be a uh, number seven and number seven becomes number six so that we could immediately do the allocation of the fixed labor based on the new number of units that the company anticipates to manufacture and sold after they discontinue with the production of the flavored cappuccino so now let us uh, proceed on that let me let me leave a question mark here because we still need to know the number of units that this company uh, must uh, must 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 use to allocate the unallocated portion of the fixed labor and i know you might be lucky but we already do have it remember this number of units were based this number of units were based take note they were based on the assumption that the company is producing the three products so now the company no longer produce uh, the flavored cappuccino maybe the sales of this will go up maybe the sales of this will go up so now we need to know the sales after the the proposal has been accepted or assuming that the proposal has been accepted therefore now will the sales units remain the same or will the sales units increase so that's what we are waiting for at this point in time so now number seven should give us a brief of that number seven says to us that the manufacturing of regular cappuccino will be increased to 490,000 cages while the unflavored cappuccino will increase to 310,000 cages in order to utilize the space capacity created by the discontinuation of the flavored cappuccino now we can see that the sales or yeah the production and sales are going up now because the company is uh, assuming the discontinuation of the flavored cappuccino has already been approved and accepted so now if this is the case therefore now we have the new number of uh, units to be manufactured and be sold so now we have to allocate our 
fixed labor based on the number of units that we anticipate uh, to be the number of sales and manufacturing. So let's go there now and check how much was our labor that was not eliminated and our labor not eliminated was 588,000 times that by 40 percent and that gave us the total of 235,200 rents so now we we have already calculated that then let us do now the allocation of this 40 percent then let us do the allocation and we allocate this on the base on the product which is a uh, regular cappuccino r cap and u cap then the allocation will be the amount the amount of 210 this must be an r the amount of 210 35000 200 then now also here we'll be allocating the same amount of 210 35200 therefore now we have to divide this by the total and we multiply this by the total for each of the products units manufactured therefore now let us check how much the total of the units uh, manufactured and sold based now on this acceptance of the discontinuation it will be 490,000 which is the new capacity now 490,000 plus 310,000 and this gives us 800,000 units so the company will still manufacture the same 800,000 units that they have been manufacturing by increasing the production and sales of the uh, products that they still manufacturing so we divide this by 800,000 and we multiply it by 490,000 and we divide here by 800,000 and we multiply here by 310,000 units that the company expects to manufacture for this division or for this product therefore now it will be 235,200 divided by 800,000 we term this by 490,000 it gives us 144,060 <clears throat> It gives us 144,060. 144,060. Then the rest will be minus 235,200. You can just do that. It gives me 91,140. Plus 144,060, we get, okay. 91,140 plus 144,060 is 235,200. Or else you can still continue calculating the second one. 235,200 divided by 800,000. Turn this by 310,000 units, which is 91,140. That will be how we allocate. And the main focus will be on the allocation of the uneliminated fixed cost this will be the focus will be on the allocation of the fixed overheads this will this is what will affect our labor in the current uh, period and our overheads in the current period so let us proceed now in the same note and see what other effects does this discontinuation has on our uh, entire department number eight says that the selling price of the unsweetened cappuccino will remain unchanged as the production increased increase as the increased production will be absorbed 
by the existing market demand so the selling price which was 50 rand will remain unchanged let me check which one is that that is for the unsweetened cappuccino that will be the u cap this will remain the same so it might be another one will go up or go down and they say there will be no increase in the variable labor rate per unit as well as the variable overhead rate per unit of the unsweetened cappuccino at least minus one problem number nine says r cap or oh, this was u cap unflavored this is now flavored cappuccino flavored cappuccino selling price will decrease to 47 rand remember it was 50 rand before as we calculated so now they say this will go down to 47 rand no longer 50 rand because of this discontinuation and this will be a decrease of the selling price uh, by 3 rand only 40 50 to 47 3 rand difference when we are using the shortcut method then after it says in order to sell the increased product available and the variable labor rate will increase with 20 percent so our late our variable labor rate will go up by 20 percent the variable labor rate will go up by 20 percent so let us check now if it says and in order to sell the increased production and the variable labor rate will increase with 20 percent and if it says there will be no increase in the regular capacity variable overhead cost per unit so let us go and check our variable labor rate and our labor rate remember it will not be per hour but it will be per unit because we are not given the number of labor hours per unit or either in total budgeted or actual however we are doing only the budgeted information so let me calculate or let us calculate our variable labor rate then after we increase that rate by 20 percent then this was number eight variable labor rate variable labor rate our variable labor rate we can just calculate it for all the product because variable cost per unit remain the same or variable cost per unit are fixed so now if we can say and we know that okay if we can say our labor is three million and twenty four thousand five hundred which is the variable one this can also vary with the number of units that are manufactured which is connected with the number of hours at the same time so you can say three million and twenty four thousand five hundred divide this by the total of eight hundred thousand units that were manufactured and this gives us three rand then we term this by 1.2 it gave us the total of labor as four and fifty four cents which is per unit so at the same time now we can also calculate it a bit differently and that different will be then the other approach that i will that just be implementing now that is just at per unit perspective so now if we want we don't even have to go there where we calculated per unit we can just say we have our total of the variable labor this is our variable labor for each of the product and we say this uh, we divide it by the number of units that were manufactured where we say one million one hundred ten sixteen thousand five hundred we divide it by 319,000 units. We estimated to manufacture and sell 319,000 units. Then we say divide by 319,000 units. This gives us 3 rand 50 cents. So now we say for the regular cappuccino it will be 3 rand 50 cents. Then we say 3 rand 50 cents plus 20%. This will give us the cost per unit and increase that by 
uh, just 20%. So let us do it for the uh, RCAP regular cappuccino. It will be 1,116,000. 1,116,000. Uh, $1,116,500. We just do it for each product. $116,500 divide this by 319,000 units. Then this gives us 3 rand 50 cents. So now 3 rand 50 cents is per kg and they say this will increase by 20% and if you increase this by 20% it will be 350 times this by 1.2 it gives us 4 and 20 cents so let us look for the second one if it does it not give us the same because variable cost per unit are said to be fixed or constant so now we have the cost of the variable labor and the cost of the variable labor for the second product is 1,026,000 1,026,000 we divide this by 285,000 units that were budgeted to be manufactured and sold. Oh, let, let me, let me, let me then not make a mistake now. We are only on the regular cappuccino. Only the regular cappuccino. Let me check. Yes, only the regular cappuccino where the labor goes up by 20%. I almost now calculated for all of them the regular cappuccino went up by 20 percent and we have done the regular cappuccino as 350 at 20 percent so we are done with that we will keep this as the same because it did not increase however we can just calculate the rate for the uh, unsweetened cappuccino so for the unsweetened cappuccino the rate will be 1,026,000 divide this by 285,000 then this will give us the rate as 360 therefore now we just have to multiply this by 310,000 units that were manufactured then this one will be multiplied by 490,000 units that are manufactured based on uh, the new production after the discontinuation then this will give us 1,116,000 rents and this will be 420 times this by 490,000 units it gives us the total of 2,005,800 so this will be two million and five thousand eight hundred so this will be the total cost because of this uh, discontinuation in terms of the variable uh, labor rate and total because we have also calculated the total not only the rate but also the total which is the total variable labor cost which is this figure and this figure then now we proceed let me confirm this card two oh five thousand or two million eighty yeah that is the third zero there uh, this one was three point sixty time this by three ten thousand one million and sixteen thousand okay just to confirm the accuracy of the figures so this will be the variable labor and i can add this two together to fifty eight thousand plus one million hundred and sixteen thousand uh, i could see this is not accurate we have three million one hundred and three million one hundred and 74,000 3,174,000 so this will be the final amount of the variable labor cost then now let me proceed to the next stage and see if we still have any other information so that is the end this is the next division 
and I'm not focusing on the coffee division as per yet. So from this stage, I can stop here and answer the question. So we know that the question, hence I said this question is a bit long, though it's only 15 marks. The question was to ignore the possibility of the internal transfer, but advise management uh, on the Cappuccino division based on the budgeted information if the uh, regular Cappuccino product should be discontinued or not. So now this is what we'll be doing, comparing the two figures when the company was making a profit, uh, a, a revenue of all these figures when they had all the three products. And now we compare that with when the company is making only two products and discontinue with another one. So I'll have two headings as usual under the discontinuation. Then now my two columns will be discontinue, another one will be continue. So we say if they discontinue, this is what will happen. If they do not discontinue, this is what will happen. Do not discontinue. Then withdraw lines in between. Then we start with the revenue. And we know that revenue, when they continue with the three products, or also with the flavored cappuccino, total revenue was 40 million 40 million when they don't discontinue they had 40 million as their revenue but now when they discontinue there will be a separate revenue for the flavored cappuccino flavored cap would have been calculated as and unsuited cappuccino would have been calculated based on the figures that now we'll be seeing. Remember, there was a change in the selling price, if you still remember that. There was a change in the selling price. And selling price went down for the regular cappuccino to 47 rand. And 47 rand times this by the number of units that we estimate to manufacture and sell. 47 times this by 490,000. So it will be 47 rand times this by 490,000. For the second one, remains at 50 rand times this by 310,000 units, which is the new units after the company has discontinued with the production of the flavored cappuccino. Sales would have went up to 310,000 for the unsweetened cappuccino. So that is where these figures are coming from. So now we have 490,000 times this by 47 rand. It gives us 23 million and 30,000. 23 million and 30,000. Second one will be 50 times this by 310,000. This will be 15 million. 15 million 500,000. Then we can draw a line here, add the two plus 23 million and 30,000. And the total revenue will be 38 million 530,000. 38 million 530,000. This is the revenue only for the two products combined. We don't have to split the two because now we are comparing the discontinuation and the continuation. Then we go to expenses. And under our expenses, we'll have direct material. Direct material. Oh, let me say costs. 
which is direct material and the direct material we need it for flavored cappuccino and unsweetened cappuccino uh, sorry regular cappuccino not flavored regular cap and you cap and we have to show the calculations and we know that if the company continue operating with the two products the material will remain at the total of 21 million 299,000 21 million 299,000 that will be the total of the material but we need to know material uh, for the two remaining products now that the company has discontinued with the production of another one so now we know that our current material for the current status before the discontinuation we had material of material of 829,000 and this material was based on the production of 319,000. So we have to say 8 million, 8, 8 million 294 divide this by 319, we get the cost of the material. Then after we multiply that by 490,000, which is the units the company wants to manufacture and sell after the discontinuation, which is the 490,000. So let me look at the cost of material for the regular cappuccino. It is eight million two ninety four thousand. It is eight million two ninety four thousand. Divide this by three hundred and nineteen thousand, and term this by four hundred and ninety thousand, which is the units the company wants to manufacture, so that we get. <coughs> to the cost to manufacture for 90,000 units cost of material to manufacture for 90,000 units 8 million 294,000 divide by 319,000 term this by 490,000 it gives me a total of 12 million 740,000 12 million seven forty thousand rands. Then after we look for the material <coughs> cost incurred for the unsweetened cappuccino material cost for the unsweetened cappuccino, which was the cost budgeted to be incurred in order to manufacture two eighty five thousand. But we need the cost in order to manufacture three hundred and ten units. No longer now. Uh, 285 because the company wants to increase their production capacity based on the discontinuation of the regular of flavored cappuccino 7 million 125 thousand divide this by the cost that was budgeted we get to our variable material cost per uh, unit 7 million 125 thousand it will be seven million one twenty five thousand divide this by two eighty five thousand and turn this by three hundred and ten thousand units that the company wants to manufacture seven million one twenty five thousand divide by two eighty five thousand and time this by three hundred and ten thousand I get seven hundred and seventy seven million seven fifty thousand seven million seven fifty thousand which is the cost now to manufacture <clears throat> three ten thousand therefore now we have twelve million seven forty thousand plus seven million seven fifty thousand and this gives us two million and forty nine thousand Two million and forty nine thousand. I don't know where this one is coming from. Two million and forty nine thousand. This is twelve million seven forty thousand plus seven million seven fifty thousand. This is two million and four hundred and 
ninety thousand. Okay, two million four hundred ten ninety two million or twenty million four hundred ten ninety thousand. So this zero must be close. It's twenty million four hundred ten ninety thousand rands. So that will be the cost of material for the two products, which is regular cappuccino and unsweetened cappuccino. If the company no longer discontinue with the production of the flavored cappuccino, however, this is the cost they would have incurred in terms of material for the three products if they did not discontinue meaning if they manufacture all the three products then now we go to the direct labor direct labor was divided into fixed and variable direct labor and we know that if the company does not uh, discontinue their labor in total would have been five million four twenty four thousand five hundred five million four twenty four thousand five hundred this is what they would have incurred however now because they discontinue then we split our labor to fixed and variable for the r cap and the u cap Let me check my calculation. This is the fixed part. Then I still have to go to the variable part of labor. And I think I'll have to exceed this page. So now we start with the fixed part of labor. And the fixed labor was calculated. We have the variable labor rate and the total. I'm not there yet. there was a fixed labor that was allocated remember we had the uneliminated part of the fixed labor from the flavored cappuccino there was a part of the flavored cappuccino fixed labor which was 50 percent uneliminated and we said this will be allocated in the ratio of 50 50 and that was 44,100 and 44,100 so now these were the costs that were directly um, related to the flavored cappuccino but now allocated to the remaining products. So now we still have to take into account the fixed cost of labor that, uh, or that were strictly related to the production of the uh, unsweetened and the regular cappuccino remember we had such amounts of labor and they are untouchable and they still remain at 957 and 810 55,000. so now we took part of this which was 40 percent and we allocated it here and here so we have to add the two figures 957,000 plus 44,100 957,000 We have 957,000 plus 44,100, all in rents. Another one, it was 510 or 810, 55, Yes, fixed was 810, 55, plus 44,100. 810, 55,000, and 91,140. So it's only those two figures that were not accurately calculated. 144,000, let's confirm, confirm. 144,060 and 91,140. 91,140. Yes. So we have uh, 957,000, no changes, plus 144,060. This gives us <clears throat> 110,000 
1060 and we have 91140 plus 855000 which is 940640 plus 110 which gives me now a total of 2 million and 47200 so that figure at least sounds better now so this will be our fixed portion of labor and we had another portion of labor that was variable another portion of labor was variable and the portion of labor that was variable i have already calculated that and the variable portion of labor which i have already allocated there we have i have the total which the total was made of two uh, million and fifty eight thousand and i said plus to that one million hundred and sixteen thousand and that gave us this total so i can just take the three million one seventy four thousand and i record it as is three million one seventy four thousand three million one seventy four thousand so i have to add my fixed to my variable plus three million one seventy four thousand this will give me the total of five million two hundred and twenty one thousand two hundred therefore now my labor would have been five million two hundred and twenty one thousand two hundred which is made of fixed and variable you don't have to calculate it in total just like adding this one and uh, this one which is number one and number two fixed and variable you can just leave them as they are but it just simplify things if you put it at the top as the heading so this was the fixed part this is the variable part so now that was all regarding our labor and uh, be mindful of the mistake that i've made i just in fact uh, added the wrong figure which was this allocation of 44 it was just still in my mind ignoring that it's a fixed overhead not fixed uh, labor and i went back and i showed you that we calculated uh, under the discontinuation the uneliminated cost of the uh, flavored cappuccino regarding fixed labor not eliminated 40 percent and that 40 percent was 235 and we allocated it uh, or calculated and apportioned it using the number of cages to the regular cappuccino and the unsweetened cappuccino and you take this part you add it to your fixed labor that was directly attributed or that was related to the regular cappuccino and unsuited cappuccino then you get your total fixed labor now after added the uneliminated portion of the flavored cappuccino that the company is uh, expecting it to be discontinued then now we go to the next one and the next one now will be our our advertising cost if i am not mistaken the next expense will be our advertising that is appearing in our income statement and our advertising cost was given to us and we have that as three million three hundred thousand rands and this 3.3 .3 was apportioned equally to the three products but now we no longer have uh, this product which is a uh, flavored cappuccino so now what do we do with the advertising let us check if was there any information additional regarding the 3.3 million uh, they said nothing extra but they said the amount due to the stream budget for the period was 3.3 million and the cost has been equally apportioned or distributed among the products so now in this case under the advertising we will have advertising of which if the company will produce 
the three products. Advertising will be 3,300,000 under the total. But now, in this case, we have to split it into regular cappuccino and unflavored cappuccino. And remember, we have to still split it equally. 3,300,000 would have to be divided by 2 and 3,300,000 will have to be divided by 2 to the two products that are left because now we no longer have the regular cappuccino anymore. Then after now this will be 3,300,000 divide this by 2 it gets to 16 million or 1,650,000 one million six hundred and fifty thousand at the end we still have to get to the three million one million six hundred and fifty thousand and also here it will be one million six hundred and fifty thousand rands the total will still have to be three million three hundred thousand rands if you see i only split in my calculations i split here in the calculations but the total comes to one. So I do not want to have three columns. If you wanted, you could have, have three columns where each of the product, which is a regular cappuccino and unsweetened cappuccino, would have, have their own column. That will still be correct. Then after you will have to add the total and to compare with the total revenue if the company proceeds with all their products. So now that was the advertising cost then we go to the next part and remember this was advertising meaning we were at this part now of the uh, income statement then we go to the depreciation and let us check how depreciation was allocated among the three products and depreciation was allocated among the three products in accordance to the number of units that were manufactured if i am not mistaken i'm just uh, skimming now over the question looking for the part that spoke about the depreciation yes there we do have the depreciation it said the manufacturing of the machine can be used on any of the product lines. Therefore, the depreciation charge is apportioned to the products based on the uh, budgeted kilograms manufactured. So now remember, the cost that we expect to incur regarding depreciation is 240,000. It does not change because of the discontinuation. So let us first record the depreciation. The depreciation did not go down, it's still to 40,000 if we manufacture all the products or part of the product. So we have to allocate another part to the red cuna cappuccino and allocate another part to the unsweetened cappuccino. So now we know that 2040 will still be incurred, and we also know that 240,000 will still be incurred, which is the depreciation. 240,000. So now in this 240,000, we have to allocate it on the basis of the number of units that uh, this company has manufactured. So now let us do that calculation based on the number of units that we anticipate to manufacture. And the total of the unit the company wants to manufacture is still remains at 800,000. But we multiply this by 490,000, which is the new units after the discontinuation, which is 490,000. And we divide this by 800,000. We times it by 310,000 units. So now maybe that 490 is not very clear. Times by 490,000 units. So now after that, it will give us depreciation for each of their product. Then we say 240,000 divide by 800,000. Remember 800,000 is 490,000 plus 310,000 units. Then after I will say 0 0.3 times this by 490,000. 
which is 147,000 of the depreciation will be allocated to the product uh, regular cappuccino. And 0 0.3 times this by 3, 10,000 will give us the allocation of depreciation as 93,000 allocated to the product uh, unsweetened cappuccino. At the end of the day, the depreciation still remains the same as 240,000. Nothing changes because we were allocating that depreciation based on the new units now that the company wants to manufacture and sell. Then we go to the next expense, which is the next page because of the limitation of uh, space. Then we go again to our income statement, line item by line item. <clears throat> then we go to our overheads now. We know that our overheads are split into fixed and variable. Fixed and variable. And remember, it said 10% of the overheads are, are fixed. 10% of the overheads cost for each product is fixed, while the remaining overheads cost are variable. Let me check uh, there was something regarding the overheads and the changing. When we spoke of the selling price under number 8, selling price of the unsweetened cappuccino, they further said that there will be no increase in the variable labor rate as well as the variable overhead rate for the unsweetened cappuccino. And they said it will remain unchanged as increase in production will be absorbed. So there was no change in the fixed cost. And there was no eliminated fixed cost regarding uh, the, 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 the fixed cost or the overhead fixed cost. Okay, there we go. That was the different one. If we go to number six, number six said 50% of the fixed costs overheads will be eliminated. And they said a fixed overheads cost not eliminated, take note, not eliminated will be apportioned equally between the R cap and the U cap. This is now the one that I have allocated incorrectly, if you remember. The 44,100 was the allocation of the fixed overheads, 44,100 equally between the two products. So now let me go to my overheads and I and I allocate them. So now we have to say overheads. And under overheads, remember, the company would have incurred the total of the overheads fixed and variable as the cost of six million or six million and nine thousand. Six million and nine thousand. This would have remained at six million and nine thousand. So this will be six million and nine thousand. Therefore, now for these two products, we need to split it into fixed and variable. The fixed part, it has to be allocated to the regular cap. <clears throat> and we know that 10% of our overheads are fixed. So 10% of the overheads, which we would have calculated that is fixed. Let me check where is the fixed 10%. 10% of overheads are fixed. This must have been on the first. Yes. 10% is fixed. Regular unsweetened. 239 to 50. That's what I want. 239 to 50 is equal to 239 to 50. 239 to 50. Then I need to add the uneliminated uh, 44,100, which was from the regular cappuccino, but uneliminated and was apportioned to the two remaining products. Unsweetened cappuccino. Let me check how much was the 10% for 
10% of the fixed overheads. 10% of that was 182,250. So 182,250 is the fixed for this product. 182,000. 182,000, 185,250, 185,250 plus the part of the fixed cost overheads that was allocated to this product, which was uneliminated from the regular cappuccino. So now this is where this 44,000 was supposed to be recorded. So we have 235,250 plus 44,100, 235,250 plus 44,100, and this gives us 279,350. Then after this will be 185,250 plus 44,100, this gives me 210. 29,350 plus 279,350 and this is 508,700 as the total. 510, 510, 500 or 5 million and 8. 508,700 508,700 Let me now just uh, recheck once again if my calculations are correct or not. Uh, my fixed overheads my fixed overheads that were allocated My fixed overheads that were allocated were 44,100 and that was the 50% and it was 50% of 176,400. Let me check if that was 50% of that. It was 50% of 1,774,000. So we said 1,764,000, term that by 10%, and 10% of that, just confirm the calculation, 1,764,000, term this by 50%, and term this by 10%, because 10% of that was uh, fixed which is 88,200 divide this by 2 and it gave me yes divide by 2 44,100 so the calculations must have been uh, correct then after we would have calculated the rest of the 10% for the 2 which is 2,300,000 Check the total again. Two million three ninety two thousand five hundred ten percent of that. Check if how much should it have been. The allocation of that. We said two million three ninety two thousand five hundred. And we had 1,852,500, we termed that by 10%, yes, and it gave us 235,250. Just confirm that cal calc again. 2,392,500, termed that by 10%. Uh, got 239,250, yes, plus uh, with 1 million. 852,500, 
then we had to add the total of 88,200. Yes, so I must have calculated wrongly. Just wanted to prove that because I know these calculations, sometimes I can easily make a mistake. So always make sure that you just always recalculate your figures. So this gives me 512 gives me 512,700 512,700 let me check where I've done the mistake 239,250 plus 44,100 is 283,350 okay this is where I've done a mistake 283,350 uh, plus 229,350 Yes, so I could have I have identified where the mistake was. Then now we have fixed as 512700 and another portion was variable. The variable part, I have already done the calculation if my memory still serves me. Variable overhead, uh, my total of the variable overhead was three million one seventy four thousand <clears throat> three million one seventy four thousand i uh, know this was labor i'm not under labor i want the variable overheads my variable overheads was 90 percent yes variable overheads was 90 percent and 90 percent was all these two which is two million one five three two fifty. Two million one five three two fifty for the regular cappuccino. Two million two million one five two million one fifty three two fifty. Two million one fifty three two fifty and the unsweetened cappuccino. Check where we calculated our variable overheads. This is how you have to deal it in the exam, honestly. One million, okay, that will be ninety percent. One million. 167,250 variable overheads in total 1 million 167,250 1 million 167,250 <clears throat> 1 million 167 1 million 667,250 1 million 667,250 one million six sixty seven thousand two fifty and that will be two million one fifty three thousand two fifty plus one million six sixty seven thousand two fifty then add the two and see how much i get it is two million one fifty three thousand two fifty Plus one million six sixty seven two fifty is three million eight hundred and twenty thousand five hundred. It is three million three million. This is the variable part. This is the variable part. Again, two million one fifty three thousand two fifty. Plus one million six hundred and sixty seven thousand two fifty uh thirty eight million or oh, three million two twenty thousand five hundred so this will be the total this will be the total of the 
variable overheads. Let me check my, if my variable overheads have been accurately calculated. Have been accurately calculated. Okay, this, this should not be the total. It's fine. The figure is fine. But this was the 90% based on the calculation of the units that the company manufactured before the taking into account that we had to manufacture and sell for 90,000 and manufacture and sell 310,000 if we discontinue with this product. So these figures are not very final. We need to adjust them based on the new production. We need to adjust them based on the new production capacity. So the figures are correct, but we just need to say divide this by 800,000 times it by 490,000. Divide it by 800,000 times it by 310,000 times it by 310,000 so that we get to our variable cost to manufacture 490,000 and 310,000 units. So this will be 2,153,250 divided by 800,000 equals times this by 490,000. Then this gives a total different figure recalculated 2,153,250 divided by 800,000 equals times this by 490,000 units that the company expects to manufacture and sell. This is uh, 13,188,000 Second one will be 1,610,67,250 divided by 800,000 equals times this by 310,000 units and this becomes 646059 610 uh, 64,000, uh, just recalculate that, 1,667,250 divided by 800,000 equals times this by 310,000 units, 646,059. Uh, then we add the two, 13, 1, H triple eight double six. It gives uh, four hundred and ninety thousand. Just recalculate this once again. This is the variable cost. I'm looking at. Let me check my calculations now. There must be something not right here. There must be something not right here. Total because it was depreciation for all the three products, one amount. So this will be divided by 319,000 times it by 490,000. Divide by 285,000 times it by... 310,000. Uh, now the tire dance is also taking place, but I'm already closing. I'm already closing. So that now, when I do something wrong, I can uh, identify that there is something strange. 2,153,250 divided by 319,000 times this by 490,000. And this gives 330,000. Uh, 337,500. Second one will be 
one million six sixty seven two fifty divide by two eighty five thousand times this by three ten thousand and it gives one eighty one thousand three five hundred plus three thirty seven five hundred which is five to one thousand five hundred and twelve thousand or five million one twenty one thousand at least that figure now seem to be at least making sense then we add our fixed to our variable then we get to our total of the overheads and this was the last part i did not want to stop this video only because of this last mistakes uh, 5 million 121 plus 5 12,000 700 and this will be a total of 56 33 3, 700 5 million 121,000 plus 5 12,700 remember these are the expenses and preferably expenses should be negative then after this will give us either a profit or a loss either a profit or a loss so if the company continue with the three products we already know that they will be making a net profit for the three products and that net profit will be five million uh, i know that is not the profit that profit will be four million one nineteen thousand five hundred four million one nineteen five hundred four million one nineteen thousand five hundred of a profit Therefore, now, if they only sell the two products, we need to calculate how much will they make in terms of the profit. So now I have to add all the revenue and subtract all the expenses that were related to the discontinuation, which is direct material, direct labor. Uh, overheads then uh, after we had advertising we had depreciation then we had overheads then we have them fixed and variable then yeah that was the last part so those are the only figure that I will be deducting from my revenue so it will be a total of 38 million Five thirty thousand. Then after thirty-eight million five thirty minus twenty million four ninety thousand minus five million two twenty one thousand two hundred five million two twenty one thousand two hundred, which is our labor. We have our advertising. This was the amount of advertising, not that. Advertising is still the same 3.3. .3. Then we had depreciation to 40,000. And we had the last one, which was the overheads. And the overheads was 5 million. Minus five million six hundred and thirty three thousand seven hundred. Just check if how much is the profit. I'll just recalculate it in case I don't get it right. We had the profit of six of three million. Profit of three million six hundred and forty five thousand one hundred. And that is correct. I think my memory still says me on this figure. It is right. So now remember, the conclusion was to advise the management either to discontinue with the production of the regular cappuccino or not. And if we look at the profit of these two 
uh, scenarios continuing and do not discontinue. We can see that if the company continue with the production of the flavored cappuccino, not the regular flavored cappuccino, they will make a profit of 4 million. But if they discontinue with that, we see that the profit will be 3 million. Therefore now, the conclusion, don't forget, when you conclude, there's marks for the conclusion. When you conclude, you'll say the profit uh, with uh, flavored cappuccino being produced is 4 million 119,500 versus the profit of 3 million 645,100. It will lead to the difference of a profit by the difference between the two, which means when the company continue with the flavored cappuccino, there is higher profit. And when the company discontinue with the cappuccino, there is lower profit. Therefore, the division should not discontinue with the production of the flavored cappuccino. Yeah, guys, with all of that, let me say thank you. This exercise uh, was a bit very intensive and it took some time. And I normally don't like to work straight from the solution i prefer to work by myself also to show understanding of me of the exercise so that uh, i can learn uh, and also evaluate myself if do i understand the topic or yeah the topic or the exercise that i'm doing so hence sometimes i will juggle around and make mistake and correct and all that stuff because i also have to learn along the way so that i understand the exercise very deeply as opposed to be uh, depending on the solution because writing assessments the solution is not there so now i prefer to make those mistakes in the recording of the video then i correct them and i adjust them as the time goes by because some figures in fact they're still in my mind therefore now i'll check if is this correct uh, based on what i know and sometimes i'll just uh, uh, test if the figure is right or it's not right but all of that maybe is not important for you. Uh, all the best. God bless you. Hope this will be useful to you. Thank you.